What is the strangest or creepiest thing you found in the middle of nowhere? Forest, desert, etc. I spent most of my life running around the woods of Southern Oregon, and I've seen some weird stuff out there. First story, way out in the middle of nowhere, far from any road, my friend and I stumbled across a large fenced-in area. Ten-foot chain link. Inside the fence were all these trees planted in perfectly straight rows. No biggie, the Forest Service does sciency stuff out in the woods sometimes. What was odd is that every single tree was bent in a specific shape. All of them were crooked in the exact same way. We didn't climb the fence that day because our dogs were acting super sketchy and one ran off. We found him eventually, thank goodness, and despite looking, I've never found that place again. Back then, I was convinced it was a nefarious government project a la Stranger Things or Aliens, lol. The vibe was really weird there, in our defense. Now that I think about it, maybe someone was growing trees in that shape to make a boat. I read that people do this. The woods can be spooky sometimes so maybe it was aliens or Bigfoot, yee. Another time with that same friend, we were again out in the literal middle of nowhere, dry camping and hiking with the dogs. We found a small clearing that had a twin-sized rusty old iron bed frame, a small rusted out cook stove and some other rusty buckets and stuff. The odd part is that it was so far from anything, even old logging spur roads. Whoever lived out there really didn't want to be found or bothered. Can't blame them, really. I have a bunch more stories if anyone is interested. Smiley face. Edit, I will make a post here tomorrow about some more of the woods weirdness. I'm working tonight and I guess I have to do my job or whatever. LOL. I wonder if the trees were meant to be used for a specific type of construction. There's a thing in woodworking called a knee, where a piece of wood forms a curve. You can cut a curved shape out of a straight plank of wood or bend wood into shape with heat, but the strongest knees are ones that form naturally so the grain of the wood follows the curve. When I was 14, I found a body floating in the Flint River near Bainbridge. It was winter, so no alligator activity, but any body in water in the deep south is going to be horribly bloated, and this one was. Race, age, and gender were no longer evident to my observation. When I was 19, I came across human remains in the woods surrounding the creek that ran behind my house. It turned out to be a hunter who'd gone missing in the early 80s. I picked up the femur thinking what a weird looking stick only to find that it was still attached to other bones. The realization of what it was was unsettling when my brain was telling me it was a big deer. Then I looked closer and there was a human mandible within a couple of feet. The fact that I was not disturbed by either led to me doing a lot of volunteer search and recovery over my life. I'm comfortable in remote areas, woods don't phase me, and a body is just a thing. A thing that deserves respect, and an important thing but I never feel creeped out. I found, aside from those two, four other partial sets of remains and one recently deceased individual who got lost in the Escalante Canyon. That one bothered me because even half a day sooner could have saved him, it's why I don't do search and rescue unless it's a child. I can't handle it, but I can put the feelings aside when it's a kid missing. Born and raised in Beattyville, Kentucky. I still live here. I've had many experiences, but my papa I seen one that still blows my mind. In the early 50s him and two of my uncles were sitting outside their house deep in a holler. All three of them saw a three-paneled door floating in the sky. It was light brown with a lantern at the bottom right of the door. They said it was a few hundred feet in the sky and they watched it for over an hour. My buddy, my wife, and her friend hiked to a remote cabin. The cabin's previous tenants had to be medevac, so my buddy and I decided to hike their belongings back down the mountain, three miles each way, so we could get it back to them. My wife and her friend went on a hike while we were gone. On their way back they found a decorative flamingo in the middle of the trail. No clue who put it there as they didn't see another soul. A couple times I've had people appear in places no one should have been. One was an old man at 2 a.m. in St. Mary's Wilderness. He said he had got turned around and asked if I could use my jeep to take him to where he wanted to camp. The road is very rough and was just a series of mud pits. I ended up agreeing, no clue why, and drove him about an hour to when he just said okay, this is fine. I dropped him off took his picture, and left. At camp I noticed he wasn't in the picture, kinda just a blur. The next morning I went to where I dropped him off and couldn't find him or any tracks. No clue if he was real or if I was imagining it all tbh. Markers from where Civil War soldiers died and how, e.g. Jack Smith, gut shot, carved into stones, not headstones, just the rocks by where they died. Sat and watched an orb slash willow the wisp with two friends for about 30 minutes before it went away. I found a comment I posted years ago about it, although I refer to it as jack-o'-lanterns per Google, here you go. Two friends and I were once sitting on a prominent peak, Lion's Head, Dolly Sods, WV, and we watched a bright light move erratically on the other side of the canyon. It would move through the trees and shoot straight up, then back to bouncing in and out of the forest. 
We watched it for about 45 minutes before it jetted down the canyon and out of sight in a blur. There's no trails over there, and no way to move around that quickly. The woods are thick, and it's a rainforest with multiple canopies, so I don't think a drone is feasible and it was about 5 years ago so I doubt there were drones with those capabilities readily available. Couldn't have been a dog with a light since we saw it fly above the trees and ultimately leave in a blur. We have two theories. The area is known for bogs, and there is a dirt road across on the other side of the ridge. Apparently there are similar lights in Texas that's been proven to be from headlights and swamp gas. This is my favorite theory. But, those lights are caused by a highway with huey traffic, not a dirt road that is itself mostly surrounded by thick forest. My buddy found something called jack-o'-lanterns, but all I could find on it was that it's an unknown phenomenon. Would love any thoughts or similar experiences from the area. That place is along the same ridge as the Green Bank Radio Telescope and close to the Navy's radio base. In high school, mid-1980s, we used to go out to the lake and stay the night. We would build a campfire and then when we got tired just sleep in our cars. It must have been around 11 p.m. when we decided to go for a hike into the thick wooded area. There was a trail. There were four of us. Three girls and one guy. We had flashlights, but we really didn't need them because the moon was bright. Then I heard something that sounded like faint music. I asked the others if they heard it and they said they did. It was like music from a jewelry box. You know, the type that has that little ballerina that spins around. We keep walking. Then right in the middle of the damn trail there it was. A white jewelry box, with the ballerina. It was just in the middle of the trail, playing music. We turned around and started to run. Then we stopped and decided to go back to where it was. The damn thing was gone. It wasn't more than a minute and it was F gone. We ran back, put the fire out and took our asses home. Grew up in Onondaga County, New York. Was hiking deep into my backyard that bordered a heavily wooded forest as a kid and came across a herd of pure white deer. Not creepy, but very shocking, as they were an albino, no red eyes, black nose. Later on I learned I came across a herd of rare Seneca white deer, most of which are within the confines of Seneca Army Depot in Seneca County, New York. A little black dog with a collar but no tag showed up randomly and stayed with my hiking group for a few days. We were really in the middle of nowhere, like far from any road and the Olympic National Forest. I really don't know where this dog could have come from. It didn't seem to want any food, I think it did accept some on occasion. For the time it was with us, we constantly got lost, misinterpreted maps, ended up in awful terrain, etc., which had not been happening before this. Then it disappeared just as suddenly as it showed up, and we figured out where we were at pretty much that exact moment and had no further troubles. Later that same night, we camped in a big clearing, and around sunset, we heard the most terrifying scream I've ever heard coming from just in the tree lane, extremely loud. It sounded exactly like a woman screaming for her life. Just one long vocalization, then nothing. I cannot stress enough that this was a remote place, nowhere near any campground or road or anything. A few of us ran to try and find the source of it and called out if anyone needed help. Searched the whole area where it came from. Nothing. We did not sleep that night. I've heard mountain lions scream before. Foxes, coyotes, you name it. This sounded nothing like any of them. It was terrifying. Just the fact that those two events coincided on the same day like that has always given me the willies in a special sort of way. The truck stop incident. I encountered a very large hole above the toilet at a truck stop between Vegas and California. On the other side, there was an old massage room with a ripped curtain off to the side. The whole scene felt unsettling and creepy. The stick figures in Santa Barbara, all walking up a trail at a popular park in Santa Barbara, I noticed small stick figures and groups of sticks arranged and in a shape hanging from very tall trees, out of reach to most people. There was something in the middle or at the top of most of them. I couldn't figure out what it was, cum, hair, small intestine. I didn't stay long enough to know. I took pictures but forgot about it until now. This was many years ago, so I should check my Google Photos to see if I still have those pictures. The incident at grandma's house. One time at my grandma's house, I went out to my car around 2am to retrieve a laundry basket of clothes. I had returned from out of town earlier that night. As I stepped out of the house and onto the sidewalk leading to the car, I looked up and saw what I swear was a very tall thing bow its head down and step backward out of sight. The best description I can give is that it looked whitish, with the head of something like a wolf, 20 years, and it was very tall and skinny. The word slinky comes to mind for some reason. I was so terrified that I stopped dead in my tracks and took two steps backward into the house. The thing I saw was nearly as tall as the corner where the eaves of the roof met. It made no sense, and I had to think it was my eyes playing tricks on me. But how could I see that from a reflection of streetlights or whatever on a stucco wall? 
the street light would have been on the other side of a very large tree, so minimal light would have come through, if any. Even now, I can describe that thing I saw to a T if someone were to try and draw it. It was skinny, white, with a wolf-like head, standing upright. I saw a white wolf-like thing in the woods too. 2012, it was Northern California bordering Nevada. In my experience it almost looked blue-white and I stopped in my tracks for a second. Turns out another member of the friend group we had at the cabin stopped near me and before I could say anything he goes did anybody see that wolf and I responded yeah but it didn't look like a real wolf, it was too white, almost blue. And, and he said moved weird, right? It was too tall. So hearing your description of the experience you've had sent chills down my spine because aside from myself and that friend I haven't heard anyone else with a similar story. My buddy and I planned a trip to an extremely remote backcountry lake on the border of Montana and Idaho. Very remote. Two hour drive into the woods, then a 22 mile shady dirt logging road, 12.5 mic hike, the last three straight bushwhacking. Most difficult hike of my life. What an amazing lake in four days. On the way back there's this section during the bushwhack where it opens up a little and follows a creek. Quite a larger creek, almost a river. We mentioned on the way in that there looked like a few good fishing spots. Anyway, we got to that section on the way out and took a cliff bar and caffeine break. Took our packs off and 20 feet away on a log there was a very old man. I mean old. I'm 45 and know what 80 years old looks like. This guy had to be 95 plus. Scared the shit out of us to even see another person. He had very dark eyes and a strange smile. He asked us where we were going and how long we'd been out. Honestly, he seemed to be vibrating. If that makes sense. The thing is, there is absolutely zero possible way the old man could get there. Impossible. Mountains on all three sides, no places to camp or even set up a tent. There were no other cars at the trailhead. I can't stress enough how impossible it would be for the frail old man to be there. This was 2018. I was four-wheeler riding with my buddies on some old logging roads in Lincoln County WV that connect to the Hatfield-McCoy trails. We happened upon an old log cabin that was abandoned and sat a few yards off the trail and we decided it would be a great spot to take a break. So we're all sitting there on our quads eating lunch and drinking a beer when I noticed this old apple tree off to the side of the cabin. I walked over and was looking it over to see if it had any apples on it. Once I got close to it I realized that there were a bunch of mice dangling from fishing line that was tied to the branches of the tree. On closer inspection there were probably 50 to 100 of them in various states of decay. They all looked smashed so they had probably been caught in a regular old mouse traps and then someone was bringing them up there, tying little knots around their necks and then dangling them from the tree. Weirdest S I've ever seen. I showed my buddies and then we hurried up and got the hell out of there. There was an abandoned house deep in the woods with a bad roof soft floors but it was an artist's workshop. Ah, uh, it was sad because it was obviously someone's life's work B. The sculptures were about the creepiest things I've ever seen. Humanoid figures with distorted faces, gaping mouths and hollow eyes. My friend took one and drowned about a month later. I was with him this second to last time at the lake. He got in the water then got back out right away, said he didn't like how murky the water was, that it gave him the creeps. He wished he was back east where the water wasn't so muddy. Annapolis Valley, Nova Scotia. On the North Mountain, not really a mountain but it's what we got, my brother was looking for caves. Found a massive landslide, probably thousands of years old. After searching around for hours on several successive trips a hole was found in the boulders and he wiggled into it. It went down a couple of feet, then in 7 to 8 feet and down a few more, then back another 8 or so feet and ended in a little room. At the back of this random hole in the middle of nowhere was a black and white framed picture of some random kid from Pakistan or India propped against the rocks and some old candle wax. No houses are, or were, near this area. A few kilometers away is what we had to even park. Rural KY, me and two buddies from high school were in the sticks getting high, and one mentioned he'd seen a roof while hiking a while back. So we ventured out. It took about two to three hours to get there. It's a log cabin with no driveway and really no way to get to it. It was unlocked and fully furnished. This place had been empty for 30 years, dates we found on notes, etc. Family pictures on the walls, books on the shelves, food in the cupboard. Dusty as heck. So, of course, we looted the place being teenagers and figuring these people clearly weren't coming back. We found some guns, nice silver, and an unopened liter of Maker's Mark. Yes, we drank it, no, we didn't know the value at the time. Smooth as silk. Anyway, we head to the basement. Standard creepy as heck log cabin in the woods basement. The kicker though was there was a door with a light behind it. After minutes of growing balls, we opened the door. It was an indoor outhouse situation, best I can put it. 
Didn't smell of sewage, but that's what the setup looked like. Had a single bulb hanging from the ceiling, and it was on. We tried every switch in that house to see if it had electricity. Even scoured the area for a meter to see if it was turning. We never even found power lines. No indication that power was run here at all. That light had been on, we're assuming, for at least 30 years. We grabbed what we were able to carry and headed back. We never went back. Asked around the holler, but no one knew what we were talking about and didn't recognize the family name that was on everything. It's like this cabin just fell out of the sky and landed in the middle of nowhere. Great memory though. Never forget it. Myself and some friends were fishing along a tributary of the Ohio River. We came upon three chickens that had been beheaded and disemboweled, but were otherwise completely intact. The bodies had been laid a few feet up from the bank and were all three side by side. It was clearly done by some pretty clean knife work, it was definitely not an animal predator. There was no sign of the missing heads were awful and the bodies were fairly fresh as rigor mortis hadn't set in yet. No signs of any other people in the area. It was very eerie and we decided to nope TF out of there. Okay this wasn't in the middle of nowhere, but it was crazy. Our kids were little back when this happened and the oldest is almost 38. We lived in the same house we still do today. My husband and the three oldest kids were out in the front yard. He was doing something to his truck. One of the kids came to the door and told me daddy wanted me to come outside, so I go out there and he and the kids are all freaked out and showing me this dead bird at the base of the pine tree out front. After so many years I honestly can't recall if it was a crow or a blackbird. I just remember it was a blackbird. They said they all heard it making whatever noise they make and it flew into the tree above. The kids were playing and my husband's messing with his truck and they heard a thud on the ground behind them. They all saw this dead bird laying there. There was just one thing that was really really wrong. It had been decapitated. Its head was laying near the body and I touched it whenever I went out there and it was still one with absolutely no rigor and there was no blood anywhere. I believe that is honestly the craziest most unexplainable thing I've ever seen. I would think if a bird's head was cut off it would bleed. And how did it lose its head? We have never had any explanation for this. We couldn't find anything that could have hurt or killed it. The most fucked thing I ever saw was an animal skull. Seems innocent enough, I know. But I was riding my truck through the woods along an old trail, an hour before sunset. Bugs everywhere in these thick woods. I saw what looked to be a bird's nest on the side of the road and thought oh. Neat. Drove by it, and suddenly every insect went silent. Air was still. Only sound was from the motor. It was indeed a large bird's nest, but inside of it sitting comfortably was a deer skull. It was adorned with flowers, mushrooms and ferns. What got me was what looked to be a bloody tongue sticking out of the mouth of a skull, off to the side. Like a perfectly placed thick tongue. Nope. I got the heaps and never got out of my truck. Walked it home. It was probably nothing demonic or evil, but in the silence of the woods, it gave me the creeps. I love to go hiking in the woods with my dog. We were on a familiar trail one day. My dog likes to run ahead and check things out. He suddenly started barking, like a higher pitched scared bark. I ran towards him and I was suddenly hit with the overwhelming smell of urine. My dog was barking at a makeshift tent that someone was living in. It was made of tarps and there was wood smoke coming out of a chimney. It looked like a solid setup. I recalled my dog and took a different path home. The next day I told my coworkers about it because everyone hikes that trail and no one had seen anything like that. I went back the next day, and there was nothing. No sign of any camp. No smell of urine, which would not wash away that fast because we didn't have any rain. My dog and I have hiked that same route multiple times since then and never seen the tent again. But every time we pass that spot, my dog gets extra protective of me and stays very close. We both feel uneasy there. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now.